Welcome to the Sunshine Parenting Podcast. My name is Audrey Monkey, and I am your host. For more than three decades, I've been a summer camp director, and I've had the privilege of working with thousands of children, teenagers, young adult counselors, and parents. I really enjoy sharing stories, tips, and ideas to help others who care about young people raise a generation of kind, self-reliant, optimistic kids who become thriving adults. If you're interested in summer camp, parenting, or happiness, you've come to the right place. In episode 48, I am talking with Reed Browdy, who is a rising senior at Wildwood School in Los Angeles and serves on the Common Sense Media Teen Council. I'm so excited to have Reed Browdy here with me today on the Sunshine Parenting Podcast. Reed has been a camper at my camp for a long time, and this year he's serving as a junior counselor. So before we get started, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell listeners a little bit about you and how old you are and where you're from and all that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Reed Browdy, um, and this is my fifth year at Gold Arrow Camp. I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm going into my senior year at Wildwood School. So last week I was doing a workshop with Reed and the rest of our junior counselors, and we were talking about um, character strengths and then sharing stories about how you all use your strengths um, just in life and how you plan to use them in the future. And in your speech, you brought up something that you're doing that I was really excited about. So talk a little bit about this volunteer thing that you're doing with Common Sense Media. So I think, uh, you know, what really kind of made me think about Common Sense Media was definitely through our strengths workshop um, and finding out that through my survey that I took, my parents took, and that my friends took all about trying to find what makes us us and, like, our most, uh, like, proudest, uh, you know, like, accomplishments and skills, I saw that. I had a trend across my family and my friends and in myself, and that was leadership. Um, I'm like involved in my school, and you know I do a lot of different activities. And one of them that really comes to mind is Common Sense Media. Uh, I kind of got involved in Common Sense about like in ninth grade, and that was through an event that we were holding at our school. Um, And it's actually the event that I really mostly work on at Common Sense Media, and it's called Notes to My Middle School Self. Mm. And what we do is it's usually a panel of two to three teens, uh, and we reflect back on our middle school selves. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? And it's all in front of parents. And then they get to ask us as many questions as they want. And basically I go through you know, how to use apps and what, you know, the big apps are, what their kids most likely are on. And I talk a lot about, you know, how can we get off our devices? How do we use our devices safely? And I think it is really important, especially in today's age, as kids, I see, like, the kids know way more than the parents on all these devices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... I think it's really important to educate the parents on, you know, all these tools that their kids are using. Okay, so you're mostly talking with the parents, though. Not Do you also talk to the middle school kids at all? Like a panel with that, or is that not part of it yet? I have talked to the middle school kids, mm-hmm. um, but I mainly do talk to the parents. Okay, I bet they love that opportunity to talk to people who are just a little bit older than their kids, but really know what's going on. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a great opportunity for the parents, and I think they get a lot out of it. Always after the events, I, talk, I stay around and I talk to all the parents, right. and they, they just are so grateful for, you know, the advice and the explanations. You know, no, I don't think the kids are sitting down with the parents and saying, Mom, I want to teach you how to use Snapchat, you know? So, like, I think it's important that we have these conversations because I'm finding out now that they're like really needed. Yes, absolutely. Well, there's so many things about this that I just think are amazing. First of all, the fact that you're stepping up and doing this like leadership with parents, which is great. Um, And also just you're kind of spreading the word about common sense media. So can you just tell a little bit about what common sense media is and what their mission, what they're doing? 
Yeah, so Common Sense Media, uh, you can actually go on their website, and what they're really known for is their reviews and advice for parents. So, for example, let's say a new movie comes out, and your kid comes up to you and says, Mom, I really want to go see this movie, and you've never even heard of the movie. Common Sense Media is a great tool for all parents to use. You can use the app or just go online to their website. You can go look up that album or the video game, the TV show, Mm -hmm. um, you know, movie. And it'll say, if you look up a show or any of those things, Uh, It'll give you a review from parents, it'll give you a review what the kids say, Mm -hmm. and it'll give you also what Common Sense says. So it's really interesting when you look up a popular movie and you see that the parent says, you gotta be like 18 to see this. Mm -hmm. And the kids are saying, no, you should be 15, you know? Right. And then what Common Sense says. Mm -hmm. We actually have categories that we rank it in. Okay. So we'll say if there's a positive role model in the movie. Mm -hmm. or if there's like alcohol and drug use, mm-hmm. language, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we really go through all those. I'm actually, I don't do any of the review side, but it's really what we're known for. Um, and I think it's awesome. I actually use it a lot just to, it's interesting to hear what people want to say right. about, yeah. you know. I can't remember what, I just used it actually. It's funny because now that you say this, I didn't realize that is what I looked up for. Um, what is that movie? It's like a joke kind of uh, action hero movie. Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool. So, well, Deadpool's really interesting because yeah. it's uh, Marvel's rated R kind of right. movie. They're stepping up, doing some, you know, adult content, right. and it's advertised for kids. Right. So. Right. That was a great one, definitely for parents. Um, and I also really like their family guides. Mm, I don't okay. use them um, a lot, but. You can always look online and in the app, and it'll just give you great advice for um, not only technology use, but just, you know, parent advice. Sure. Well, I'm going to put links to everything in the show notes so that parents can download the app and all that. That's actually really the only thing that I, now that I think about it, that's what I knew Common Sense for, was for movies, mostly. Like yeah. looking at movie ratings and stuff. So tell me about, you started talking a little bit about this, um, you went to this event, or how did you first get exposed to this kind of training in schools that you're now involved in? So I was asked to do one at my school, Common Sense Media partners with different schools to put on these events okay so they partnered with my school and as a school you have the choice to have people from common sense come and talk Mm -hmm. or if you can find kids in your community you can ask them to speak and i was chosen to talk and i was really excited because technology is a really big passion of mine um i don't only I'm not really only involved in common sense media. I enjoy, you know, building websites and trying to like, you know, make some money there. Sure. Uh, so you've been doing web design? Yeah, I've been really? doing like, some websites for people. That's pretty great. Um, so At that, 17, you already have like a job, like volunteer stuff. You got a lot going on already. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really enjoyed doing it. I thought it was a great event, not only for me because we get so much out of it, Mm -hmm. but also for the parents. And I wanted to get even more involved in the company. And through that, I was able to get on the team board at Common Sense Media. And ever since then, I haven't stopped and I've loved it. That's so cool. So if parents want to bring... So you, you were explaining to me that Common Sense Media has these resources. So if a school or any group wants the resources, they can just use them themselves? Or they can have someone from Common Sense come and talk? Yeah, so we, you can partner with the school and we'll bring people from our board to do these events. Or um, if you have kids in your community that the school feels comfortable talking, uh, talking, you know, uh, they can uh, pick them to be on the panel. Um, so that's with that event. But also what we do with schools is um, our digital footprint curriculum. Mm. And that's kind of like a year-long curriculum focusing on, you know, your life online. Mm-hmm. And they really want to start implementing that as early as possible because right. we're noticing that the age for getting a phone keeps going lower and lower. Right. What is it now? Like, what's the average age? I'm scared to ask. Uh, I would... 
we usually say it's around fifth grade. And I got my really? phone in seventh grade. Okay. So just in a couple of years, we're seeing it rapidly go right. down. Um, and see, when my older kids were young, it was like high schoolish. Yeah. Or the first time that you're kind of like going to be gone a lot doing sports or anything like that, it was definitely maybe middle school to high school, but never would we have considered it during elementary school back then, you know, whatever, just a mere five or 10 years ago. Yeah. It was like not even a thought. So yeah. So, and I love that idea of kind of teaching kids early on that, you know, unfortunately, whatever you post online is just there forever. Even after you take it down, it is there forever. Someone showed me that you can find like old websites of your own. Like it's all archived somewhere. Uh -huh. So no matter what you do, even if you try to take it down or whatever. So that's, and that's so hard when you think about a 10 year old or an 11 year old and that, you know, they don't know and that responsibility. So that's a great thing. So that's a year long curriculum that schools can do. And it's kind of about your online reputation and sort of what image you're putting out to the world, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's developing and we're really trying to change it to keep up with all the trends. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's just constant because there's like a new app every couple months. It never stops. I know. It and then it's like something stops. else is cool <laughs> and whatever else. Okay. So I want to switch gears a little bit. When you're meeting with parents, because I think a lot of my listeners are parents. So mm -hmm. I want them to get the benefit as if they came to your workshop at your school and you were on the panel. Um, why don't you talk about some of the things that come up, questions that they ask commonly, and um, what advice you find yourself giving? So there's a lot of different ones. It's mainly the kid wanting and wanting and wanting, wanting the phone, wanting to get the social media. and parents are constantly looking for how to deal with these problems. Um, you mean like how to say no? How or, to say no or, or like do I give in, right? Because right. do you want to just keep, do you want to keep your child away from all of the other kids who have it? You know, like we're looking at what fifth graders now having mm -hmm. phones and say your kid's the one who doesn't have the phone. Mm -hmm. So does that exclude your kid from those conversations and those activities? You know, when everyone think about it, we, I see this a lot in my life going out to eat, like with my family, um, something that common sense media really pushes for is that like digital free meal. Mm -hmm. But I go out and I see, you know, the kids with the iPads on the table mm -hmm. and I even see it with my friends going out to eat and all of them are on their phones. And I think it must be really hard for fifth graders to, you know, go out with their friends and they're on their phones and they're not able to participate in mm -hmm. playing the game or going on the app or taking right. the photos. So I would say from my perspective, it's, it's, that's a really tough one. You mm -hmm. know, um, I think that if you get the phone, most likely it's always a smartphone. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what I hear and now I think when you get the phone you get the apps mm -hmm. so if you start early as fifth grade I personally don't see the purposes um, for it so I don't know if I would really recommend it mm -hmm. but you know it's it's really up to the family right and the kid's going to keep pushing. We, yeah we no matter that. what they're going to it's funny because um, so I've been following the whole like technology thing a lot just because as you know at camp one of the reasons that I think kids really enjoy it here and parents really like sending their kids is that we're unplugged and when we say unplugged even our staff are not permitted to have their phones around they can only use them when they're time off and away like not in camp and um, and we really believe it's one of the main reasons that our program flourishes that kids really learn some great friendship skills because they're forced to be offline and every time I interview kids these older kids, you know, your age and whatever, everyone talks about how great it feels it's, being unplugged. I love it. And that's one of the reasons why I keep coming back to camp, you know, that digital detox, I call yes. it. Yeah. Like, we need it. It is so important. And I think when you look at social media, when you look at all these apps, I don't see a lot of the positives coming through. Mm -hmm. um, I tell that to parents all the time. I we always keep reading these problems and these articles um, that focus on the negatives. Mm -hmm. And I'm not always seeing the positives. Yeah. So it, well, somebody was, I, there was recently, like, I mean, I think there are some ways that young people are using social media for good. Like, if they're getting a group together to march for a cause or something like that, but that's 
a very limited part of, to me, my perception is that, especially for, I see boys are doing a lot of gaming, like, you know, Fortnite is now so big that they're, <laughs> and like the hours that people spend, I just got some article about, you know, some people are spending up to 25 or 30 hours a week. That's like a job on crazy. one oh game. My God. <laughs> and then um, the social media impact, I know, especially for girls and the younger girls, especially like middle school and high school, um, already when there's so much pressure about your appearance and everything to then have, you know, this filtered seeing all the things you're left out of, it can really be damaging to your mental health. So I'm kind of with you that I see great reasons like to connect with others, to get together, to make plans, to have a group chat where you encourage each other. There's like good ways to use a phone that are like positive for friendships, but a lot of the things, and when you think about a 10 year old or 11 year old in fifth grade, that's a lot of power to put in a kid's hand. Um, I've heard, so Devorah Heitner wrote this book called Screenwise. And she has a really good philosophy and she teaches parents that you can be a tech positive parent. So instead of being like, you and I are a little bit being like, ah, they're so bad. But acknowledging there's good things about it and wow, you know, we can use stuff to learn about things or if you're creating something like you were talking about web design. If you're online creating a website, that's like using your brain, you're designing, it's, that's cool. I think, I mean, there are definitely benefits. Yes. Uh, and it's really, you know, helped me even like get money, you know, yeah. like without yes. the technology, I wouldn't. Well, be a lot able of jobs that. are probably going to be for your generation. Tons of jobs will either be in technology or will require technology. I mean, even for me, I'm doing a podcast. I have to figure out how to record it and how to get it somewhere, and you know, Definitely. how to share it. I mean, there's always going to be this technology thing. So I, I so anyway, so this tech positive thing is just talking about how how can we raise our kids to learn to self regulate and use it wisely. And her suggestion was like. When you were talking about like the 11 year old in fifth grade what i would say to parents is if you're feeling like it's a thing like them being left out have them use your phone and have them have a practice with you so whatever the social media thing is that their friends are using at the moment which we can't even probably say what it is right mm-hmm. now because it'll be outdated by the time the <laughs> podcast comes out in a month but whatever that thing is if they're really wanting to do that what about doing it with a mentor, you as the parent, mentoring the, the communication at first? So when you're 10 years old and you're learning how to use Snapchat or Instagram or whatever it is, you're doing it on your parents' phone. Your login and everything is just with them. It's yeah. your, it could be their name, but you're with them and you're helping them talk through, oh, what's this message? And I've heard that and that's what Devora recommends is that, you know, or yeah, so before they have their own phone, they could practice on yours. And then you're also then can like kind of decide how long they're on it and you can help them with it as opposed to just handing this thing over and being like, okay, have fun. And then not having a clue what's happening. I love that. You know, something that I always talk about is this parent child relationship. Mm -hmm. It is so important, especially at this age yes um and i think what i always tell parents is find a connection or a passion that you and your child share that doesn't involve screen time Mm -hmm. you know uh i've realized that my dad and i we've gotten really close because we like to go hiking every weekend getting out of the house getting off the screen time and just spending time talking to each other yeah, so I mean good. that is one of the best things about camp too right um, and you know always something that we recommend is in the terms and agreements on these apps I know they're so long and they're like not even English these days right right but um, you do have to be 13 usually to be on right. all these apps right so if your kid is going crazy saying I want to be on it I want to be on it and they're not 13 like you could say it's the contract for right. the app Right. That is like our number one go-to right. excuse. That's great because I also, see, I'm the same way with like the drinking age and everything else. I think anytime you start as a parent just compromising on something that's a law or a policy, it's a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Because if you start saying, oh, well, you're, you know, you're 17, that's fine, you can have a beer. Um, you're then just telling your child, even though I, it's against the law, I'm condoning this. And so I really agree using the app's rules, which have a reason to be there. Right. Um, there's a whole website, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called Wait Until 8th, and it's a whole mm-hmm. movement of trying to encourage parents to wait until their kids are in 8th grade to get a phone. I love that. Which, um, so you can look that up, and one of, um, one of somebody who I've interviewed before on my podcast, she, um, her name is Ashley Peters, she's a mom and a former teacher, and she has, every year for her daughter's birthday party, um, had phone-free slumber parties. 
and she's really great. She sends a text out to all the parents and she says, you know, I want the girls to have a great time together. I want that they're gonna swim, they're gonna have so much fun, and I don't want them to be online, posting photos, um, you know, all that. And she's gotten a great response. People are like, wow, what a concept. And I think parents sometimes don't realize that they get to set the rules in their home. So, you know, or with their families, like if you're gonna do a hike or you're still trying to figure out whether it's tennis or something that you do with your family that's off screens, might take some time to find it, but you're the parent and even if the kids are grumbling, just keep trying, don't yeah, you think? Just for like, sure, you really want that. And also, especially going into middle school and high school, you wanna start with a trustworthy relationship. Mm -hmm. It is so important. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it, like, especially throughout high school, the parents that I believe don't really trust their kids, I think the kids act out. And you really want to have that trustworthy relationship. Yeah, and I think it sure. does start with the phone. Yeah, it does. Well, and Devorah Heitner, my, that same person, one of the things she said is kids will make mistakes online, just like adults have. Like, you accidentally send the email to the wrong, you mm -hmm. know, you reply to the wrong person. <laughs> like. Do digital reply all. <laughs> uh -huh, reply all. So digital mistakes happen. And what she says is, again, we as parents need to mentor our kids through that. So say a kid, you know, posts a picture that hurts someone's feelings. You know, how do you repair that? How do you, you know, make sure it doesn't happen again? So really, like she's saying, that relationship, and like you're saying, is just, you need to be able to talk to your kids. And just like when we were kids, and maybe before phones, we had problems with friends. Now some of those problems are online, but parents still can play a role as a mentor in the relationship part. And what Devorah says is, it doesn't matter if the parent doesn't know the specific app. If their kid's in high school and something happens online that, you know, causes a social issue or conflict, you as a parent can still help with the conflict because you've dealt with that a lot in life and so you don't have to feel like you just are hands off like I don't know what they're doing you get you get to ask questions you know what are your friends doing that's really kind that's online what are some things that are happening that you don't like just ask your kids to start the conversation especially I think what's I love that mentorship thing um, and what is really important for parents, I think, is check how much you use social media. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot that, like, <laughs> I've seen the kids who, you know, I follow some of the parents and I follow the kids, and it is like a direct correlation. If the parent posts all the time, does all the Facebook updates, everything, most likely the kid's going to do it too. Right. So I have yeah. seen that happen a yeah. lot, actually. Yeah. Um, and I think parents, like, look at yourself, check yourself, you know, make sure that you are being a mentor to your yeah. child. I think sometimes parents don't realize, they think like once their kid's a teenager, like they don't matter anymore. But parents really do matter. And kids do look at, you know, what we're doing and how we're spending our time. And if we want to get into something outdoors or go camping, they'll go, you know, you guys will go along with yeah. us if we, if we, you know, you might even grumble. And that's the thing about like the, the having rules about phones, like not in your bedroom or not during meals or whatever your family rules are about screens. If you follow them yourself and you model that, then your kids are much more likely to understand Definitely. and follow those same things. Okay, so what else? We're just having such a great talk. We're already at 22 minutes. So we'll, uh, what, else, what else do you like to share with parents or what comes up in your, your talks? Um, you know, the parents definitely like to know a lot about those trends and those apps as we talked about. Um, and we go over some key features that I think promote the addiction to the screens. Mm. Something that we talk a lot about is the Snapchat streak. I don't know if you've heard of that. Oh, yes. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> just for those that don't know, it is basically a number that goes right next to your friend's name, and it just shows the number of days that both of the sender and responder have snapped each other mm -hmm. um, consistently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is a tool... I think a genius tool by Snapchat to make sure that um, their users are always going on the app, that make sure that they go on the app every day. And especially if you have 30 different streaks of people, that could be up to 30 photos that your um, child's, you know, sending, and that's a lot of time. So. Um, we like to talk about that feature. We talk a lot about Instagram. I believe that right now Instagram is the most popular app mm -hmm. um, through at least my friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all these apps are a little too perfect. 
you know, if you go on any kid's uh, wall and look at their photos and their posts, everything just seems a little perfect. Um, and it makes, I've even been in this position before, you know, when you see a friend's photo and it looks like they're having a great time mm -hmm. and you're on the couch at home, mm -hmm. not there, you just get down on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we really need to realize, and I'm still trying to work with this, mm -hmm. like, it's fake, you know? It's not, <laughs> yeah. like, it is not perfect. It's right. not a perfect world. Right. Um, so we we definitely touch on that. Um, avoiding screen yeah, I feel like, time. like the Snapchat thing, I feel like this marketing stuff, like I forwarded the Fortnite addiction stuff to my boys because one of them was playing it a lot <laughs> um, in the spring before they came to camp. And I was just wondering like if you teach kids, like if you went to middle school kids and said, look at how Snapchat has gotten you to do this. I always felt like when, when someone shared with me the marketing or the science behind why I was feeling like I needed to do something, you know, your natural tendency is to say, well, I don't want to fall for their trick. They're tricking me into, you know, going on their app all the time or whatever. So I just wonder how much it would help or does it not because they're all doing it. You know, like, I, I, I should talk to middle schoolers more. Mm -hmm. I, I mostly, you know, as I said, talk to the parents and I'd love to have those conversations on like, here's the trick, yeah. you know, here's the magic trick. Right. Um, you know, something that I really appreciate about being on the Common Sense Media board is every meeting we bring in someone who is involved in the media or communication journalism mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, so I've gotten to have these, you know, great conversations with so many people in the media world. And I love hearing all the different perspectives because with this conversation, there really isn't a right answer. Mm -hmm. um, you know... I think we're looking for that. Even Common Sense Media is looking for that still. Right, right. Um, but it's just interesting. There's so many different perspectives, mm -hmm. and each family is going to have a different perspective. Right. Each parent's going to have a different right. perspective. Um, but I think Common Sense Media has great resources, mm -hmm. um, and just like online, there is so much about this topic. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Books and people to talk to. And, like, even having conversations with your kid mm -hmm. is, like, I totally give the thumbs up to. Yeah. Like, have these conversations with your kid. It is really, really important. Does Common Sense Media have any guides for parents? I know maybe wait until 8th does, too, but it would be good. I'll look for some resources and add them to the show notes because if there were just some good questions to ask. I remember when, um, when I interviewed Devorah Heitner, one of the things she told me, which I thought was so great, is to ask your kids, who of their friends do you feel like has a really positive presence online? Like when you look at their feed, you just are like, you know, it's kind of uplifting. Maybe they share, you know, what they're doing, but also maybe something they believe in or, you know, versus someone who they think is like, oh, they're kind of like oversharing selfies or whatever. And kids are really like kids know very astute about what kind of, you know, gives a good like social media presence and who they like a lot mm -hmm. because of the way they present themselves. And so just even having that conversation like with your child before they start going on Instagram or if they're already on it and they're posting some kind of like pictures that you're like, huh, what are you trying to say here with this? Just having that conversation like what, what are you trying to get from this? Because there are some really sad things going on. Like for girls, the fewer clothes they have on, the more likes they get. So, you know, again, if, if you're thinking, if these kids are thinking that like likes mean like popularity or I fit in, um, there's some pretty icky stuff that's getting likes. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think, you know, something that you said, like that conversation piece, by having those conversations, we, at Common Sense Media, we really enforce like this trustworthy adult or, you know, uh, mentor figure. Mm -hmm. Basically, if your kid is going to be on social media, it doesn't always have to be the parent, mm -hmm. but just, I think... If, you, if you're going to be on social media, you need to have this go-to person. Mm -hmm. If you see something that mm -hmm. doesn't look right, mm -hmm. like maybe one of those like posts that's getting so many likes but just doesn't feel right, uh -huh. the child needs to go talk to some trustworthy adult. Uh -huh. um, we really, really enforce that. That's really important. Yeah. I feel like they'd be more likely to go to someone like you, like a high school-age kid. 
I feel like that would be a great thing is if you and your uh, peers who are kind of a little more aware at this point of, you know, how you got involved and kind of the pitfalls and, you know, what's worked for you, what hasn't, um, would be great if you guys could mentor then the kids. That's I, that's a great <laughs> idea. I like that. Seriously, because, I mean, as we have learned at camp, the reason that, like, the camp formula works is you have... Um, the people that kids will listen to most are the ones who are just slightly older. So like mm -hmm. middle school kids really listen to high school kids. High school kids think college kids are really cool. So like camp counselors, the reason they're so effective and can often kind of teach concepts or model positive things more than parents are is that they feel more relevant to the kids. You know, um, at my age, I'm not, I don't even, you know, I'm not that interested in Snapchat. <laughs> I know I'm not relevant anymore. Just like, I'm not going to, no one's going to want to necessarily follow me except for maybe my own kids. But I see like all of these great kids like you who are here, who can Thank model you. for younger kids. So I feel like that's part of the answer too, is just a little more conversation. And like you said, if maybe if the parent is not really aware of online stuff, Find someone, you know, at your church or religious organization, at your school, uh, an older kind of, you know, big brother type person or big sister. But you're right. Every kid needs somebody who's going to be following all their social media accounts and letting them know if like, uh-oh, wow, you better like look at this or that didn't sound very kind. I know you're a kind person the way that came across. You know what I mean? Just someone who's going totally. to help them. So, well, this has been so great, Reed. We could go on forever. <laughs> we'll for have sure. to do it again. No, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. And um, if any of the parents have any questions, please put my information um, in the show notes. And I'd love to talk to people. I bet you're going to get a lot of, lot of uh emails and stuff. Okay. So awesome. I will put, um, put all the show notes. Thanks so much for being on. I'll let you get back out to camp. Reed. Thank you. Thanks. If there's been one theme to my summer, it's been just being amazed at the wisdom of the young people that I get to work with at camp. And Reed is no exception. I so enjoyed chatting with him and just hearing his ideas and what he's been working with. Um, Common Sense Media on. And I put so many of the quotes and excerpts from this episode in the show notes. You can find the show notes at my website, which is at sunshine-parenting.com. And you can search for episode 48. And in that, in those show notes, I have links to all the different things that Reed and I talked about, as well as some of his quotes. Um, I would really appreciate if you're a regular listener, if you would take a moment to go onto iTunes and give Sunshine Parenting Podcast a rating, it would really be helpful because it will help other parents find my podcast. So I appreciate your help with that. Also, if you don't re currently receive my weekly emails, I'd love to add you to my email list. You can find the link to sign up for my weekly email at sunshine-parenting.com. I'm going to end this episode with a quote from Reed Browdy. Something I always talk about is the parent-child relationship. It is so important, especially at this age. Find a connection or passion that you and your child share that doesn't involve screen time. This podcast is a proud member of Parents on Demand, a network of high-quality shows for families just like yours. Download our free network app on Apple and Android and listen to your favorite episodes on the go.